Um, what I have learned from today is the best keynote speech to do is the one at the end of the day. Because um, having a, a keynote speech at the beginning of the day from Alec gave me a huge amount of context and, and sort of filled in some of the gaps of what I'm about to say. And also, working through the day and going to each of the particular workshops, um, it's pretty good because it kind of writes itself because all of the things I'm going to say and the little bits of that I put on slides um, hurriedly last night, um, now will make sense to me. So it, it's a perfect piece of learning for me. Um, my name's Tony Davis. I'm the um, Commercial Director of the West End Academic Health Science Network. I'm going to start off by giving you a bit of background to Academic Health Science Network, and I promise I'll do it very, very quickly, because hopefully through the day you've got bored of hearing the words AHSN or Academic Health Science Network and seeing that, seeing that logo. Um, but uh, I'm going to give you a bit of context <coughs> about where we're coming from and why we are a keen advocate, supporter, and financer of um, digital health as a theme within the West Midlands. And so, you probably won't be able to read that, which is really good, because it, it means that I can read it and you won't realise I'm reading my slides. <laughs> and so, um, if we start at the top, I'm saying that, I can't see it in my glasses now. Um, we start at the top, the context. So UK government, um, out of uh, a couple of things, life sciences strategy, um, when the uh, Conservative government came into power, Cameron um, announced a life sciences strategy, and we now have a Minister for Life Sciences, so there's been a, a physical manifestation of the commitment to life sciences. And at the same time, there was a review undertaken by the Department of Health and NHS um, that was about innovation, health and wealth. And so, um, the coming together and the emergence of that, those two particular themes in two different government, at that time, two different government departments, uh, there were certain actions which sprung from that. And one of them was the formation of academic health science networks. And so there are 15 academic health science networks. Um, it is an English endeavour. There are, uh, they, they range from the northeast right way down to the south, east and the southwest in England. Um, they are all many and various in size, and they all have different themes and priorities. Um, but they have one core mission. And the core mission is to make, is to drive the adoption of innovation at scale and pace within the NHS. And the, the key points there, innovation we can discuss for days what innovation is and what it constitutes. But the, the key point is the adoption of. Because um, AHSN sprung out of many, many reports, one that's been the, 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 the first book report, about how um, we have a unique opportunity through the NHS of having a singularised health system, um, but we are still, and for all the many reasons that many people know, and I expect to this morning, we're still a slow and late adoption, adopter of innovation. And so the notion of creating academic health science networks on the back of the initial academic health science centres, uh, the centres of excellence that were created and licensed previously, was to actually try and address this issue. And the other key points around our designation were that we're there to address the adoption of innovation. Uh, and why is that important? Because it drives health outcomes, but it also generates wealth. And if you think of the context of the environment, the, the, the launch of AHSNs and the, the start of the, the life science strategy and innovation, health and wealth, uh, the economic um, crisis that we were in at the time and the challenge that we have as an economy, and, and, and our GDP contribution to health, there is an important factor around solving the, the use of innovation and the adoption of innovation because it will drive economic development, growth and wealth. And so that's where we came from. We've got a, a specific vision, and our vision is that the West Midlands AHSN will be pivotal in the generation and maintenance of a healthier region in which there is equitable access to high quality, efficient, effective, patient-centred care that delivers the best clinical outcomes and patient satisfaction through faster adoption of innovation. Um, wasn't done by a committee that one, obviously, you can't, can't recognise that. Um, but it neatly sums up an awful lot of what I just said. The, our particular emphasis in the West Midlands, our particular vision for the West Midlands, is to create and drive positive health outcomes and wealth. 
So our mission is the West Midlands Age Assembly Act is a catalyst to drive cooperation, collaboration and productivity between academia, business, consumers <coughs> and care providers and accelerate the adoption of innovation to generate continuous improvement in the region's health and wealth. And today is an actual manifestation of that. We, we're very, very key to our um, implementation and our de the delivery of our mission is, and our vision is, the ABC, the, uh, the, our members of the Academic Health Science Network in the West Midlands are academic, they are business, and they are clinicians. And, and working together and collaboratively, and, and as you've seen today and heard today, um, how clinical, academic, and industry collaborate, we will deliver positive health outcomes and wealth. And so our values, is, uh, the, the, our values are the West Midlands HSM will maintain shared purpose and shared endeavour across its members and partners and it will be honest, transparent, inclusive and innovative. We, we, we very much want to be seen as, uh, if you use the words, catalyst to the, to the type of innovation and development and, and the approaches to the challenges that you've heard today. We also, we also want to be honest brokers in that. We want to be able to actively stimulate and move between academia, business and clinical um, priorities and challenges and come up with the best solution <coughs> for the patient. Because in the first bits, it's all about health outcomes, but clearly the patient is a key recipient of any of the activities carried out between academia, business and clinical, and any of the activities of the NHS. And so, our partners, as I mentioned, are healthcare providers and commissioners, academia, <coughs> universities, research networks, educational organisations, industry, and in industry we mean medical technology, pharmaceutical diagnostics, health IT, and generally the, the private sector. And our population is the public, patients, and the carers. So, um, each, each, as I mentioned, each of the HS centres have different priorities and they have different themes. And so in the West Midlands, and you'll see some of them coming out today, our, um, our particular clinical priorities that we've concentrated on in the first year, and they may change, and we have a five-year licence from NHS England to deliver a mission. We, these priorities may change, but at the moment they are mental health, long-term conditions and um, drug safety, medicines optimisation. Um, and within, the, within our AHSN as well, we have some core themes. And our two major themes that we have a, a, a national responsibility for, um, one of them is digital health, which I'm pleased to hear from contestant today, and the other one is wealth creation and economic growth. And we're looking to lead on both of those from a, from a, from a um, national perspective. Um, we also have themes in clinical trials, integrated care, innovation and adoption, and I will admit that I've also mentioned industry and education and training. So we have themes and we have priorities and we have some system priorities as well. So um, we are also beginning to develop and roll out activity around patient safety. We're looking specifically at the needs and requirements of the workforce of the future. We're looking, to, we're looking at um, wellness and disease prevention, so much earlier in the um, health they can continue. And we're also um, uh, developing service priority around patient experience. So putting the patient at the centre of all the things that we do. So, um, how are we going to do that? So, all of our themes and our priorities, as they develop, will pull digital solutions through them. So, so you heard this morning from the presentation, and hopefully you've heard in all the workshops today, that digital health, informatics, data, is an enabler, it's an AHS enabler. And it always strikes me when it's, uh, you know, Slightly in one of the workshops that um, we should probably get away from say digital health because all health in the future will be digital. And I suppose if we're engaged with patients, if you ask a patient, well, do you want analog health or do you want digital health? They're probably going to go digital. 
because that's how they chose their TV. Now, so uh, um, we we digital health is all invasive. Digital technology, data is an enabler on all of our themes and all of our priorities. And so it cuts across everything that we do and is a massive importance to the AHSA and to the, to the NHS going forward. So on the bottom bit of the, 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 the first slide that I put up, is how we do it. Um, and there's, there's two approaches with the AHSM that we look at. And specifically looking at it around today's topic and the network. Digital innovation. How does digital innovation get pushed towards the service and towards the academic health science network? So we have clinical push. And, and you, you represented this morning with our Alex presentation, we have lots and lots of brilliant work and great leaders and fantastic advocates um, and experts in the clinic in our clinical community in our hospital management community and our administrators who are pushing at us to drive and deliver innovation in digital right across the, and, and all areas across the surface and so as an ahsn and as a region, we are experiencing clinical push, and it's, it's our job to try and help those, uh, those innovators and help those who are perhaps at times in a minority become a majority. So that doing things differently, being innovative, adopting new technology, rising to new challenges is something that everyone does and is a core part of what they're delivering. Academic, then again, through the workshops today, you've seen lots of presentations of all the, the fantastic work and, and the way that academia is pushing the, um, what can be achieved and what the potential is and what, what massive opportunities there are in how we manage digital technology and data. And so the significant academic push to actually drive towards our digital um, outcomes. And industry, industry obviously is developing solutions, not just for this economy, but for, for glo the global economy, looking at how the next market opportunity arises, what digital provides, um, what new devices, how devices talk to each other, how does the drug pathway change because of what can be done with data and, and uh, digital enablement. So industry is constantly pushing at us to look at the adoption of innovation much more effectively and efficiently and working with our academic and clinical partners in order to do that. The, um, So we've well, heard about the what we're doing. You've heard about the pull of digital te uh, technology and digital innovation and the push. But it's important for us as a as a region in each of the themes and the priorities that we're doing to have a um, a vision. And we, when we were designated and when we were going through and forming the Academic Health Science Network, there is a key statement which is in. Um, our business plan, our first business plan will be all of our business plans because the notion of the West Midlands becoming a truly integrated digital enabled health economy. And we said that to NHS England and we said it to all parts of government. And it's a bold vision. I think all of you will agree. And everything that you've heard today is looking at how we can realise that vision. But we've also heard today that there are significant challenges and there are significant things and jobs to do to be able to get there and to achieve that. And so looking at our themes and our priorities and some of the work that we've, we've identified going forward over the next five years, how does, what are those challenges in those areas 
to get to that digital vision for the West Midlands. So if you look at integrated care, and this is where a lot of the things that you've heard today start to, to chime. Integrated care, if we're truly going to deliver integrated care and our digital vision, then how do you manage the organisational interfaces and exchanges of data and information um, between different complex and simple organisations? How do you get to a point where all of our hospitals talk to each other and have the capacity to be able to talk to each other and share data and have interoperability so that we can look at a whole region service to our patient population that learns and, and devises a digital community that can learn and engage itself and learn from practice so that the smallest provider can learn from the largest provider and vice versa. How do we actually get to the point of primary care talking to secondary care? How do we engage social care? How do we work with the local authorities and how do we work with private providers so that again the patient experience is the same wherever they are within the system? So how, do you, how, would, how would we get to integrated care? How would we get to patient-centred care? And that has to be one of the most significant challenges. The other challenges are around the patients as well, so <coughs> we've been given the responsibility by NHS England to, to develop patient safety collaboratives and in order to deliver patient safety and allow patients to feedback efficiently and effective and to get them truly engaged with their own health and, and supporting and managing and sustaining their own health, how do we get digital interfaces, how do we get um, the, the users to be able to engage with our digital health economy in the West Midlands. How do we use digital tools to empower the patient on their journey and inform them in a way that they can understand and that they can access? And hopefully today you've seen some examples where we, we can potentially look at getting behind these and these examples are coming from either academia or clinical and there are examples out in industry that we're looking at that can provide an interface to the patient journey. But joining that up so that all parts of that journey can be seen by the patient, you've heard in a lot of the workshops today, is a significant challenge and we know that's something we've got to address. And how do we look at the changing face of medicine and the changing face uh, of, of how um, a patient experiences their healthcare? So in parts today, you've heard little bits about the genomics medicine service and genomic medicine and, and the only way a massively disruptive and transformational opportunity to deliver personalised targeted health care to, to patients can only be driven by the use of universal informatics and data and if we're truly going to get the genomic service for the West Midlands we have to be able to drive and develop interoperability across all the settings and all available sites to be able to do that and, and these transformational changes and these better outcomes for patients because we're using innovative technology has to be underpinned by informatics and the use of data and inter interoperability and the systems talking to each other. So how are we looking to do this? And, and I'm not the last speaker. Theo's going to Theo's going to talk to this, um, but just to, just to set him up, set it up. Um, we need and we have put into place the West Midlands um, NHS put into place strong strategic and operational leadership in order to deliver that vision. But we have a task to, to grow that and to involve as many as the the, the leaders and the thought and the the the. Alec this morning and, and lots of his lots of the community out there who are willing to, to take leadership roles about delivering this type of vision and to work with us. And this event today and, and the Win Network, which we've um, we've supported in, in this first year, is really, really important as a because in order to do this we need a network that stimulates digital push and responds to the digital pull that I talked about. We need that to build 
regional digital enabled integrated health economy that our population needs. We need to know where there is excellent excellence already being developed out there and if it can fit if it fits in to that overall vision we need to be able to work with it and develop it as an African council. So, uh, <coughs> thank you. Just in time my voice is going.